Bernard Jean Etienne Arnaud is a French billionaire investor, businessman, and art collector. He is the chairman and chief executive of LVMH Moet Hennessy, Louis Vuitton SE, the world's largest luxury goods company. A centi billionaire, Arnaud is the richest person in the world as of May 26, 2021. One of the world's ultimate tastemakers, Bernard Arnault oversees an empire of 70 brands including Louis Vuitton and Sephora. Four of Arnault's five children work in corners of the LVMH empire, Frederic, Delphine, Antoine and Alexander. Bernard Jean Etienne Arnault was born on 5 March 1949, in Roubaix, France. His father, manufacturer Jean Léon Arnault, was a graduate of École Centrale Paris. His mother, Marie-Joseph Savinel, had a fascination for Dior, and was the daughter of Etienne Savinel, who entrusted her husband with the management of his civil engineering company Ferret Savinel in 1950, and later its ownership. Ferret Savinel later became Farinel, and then the George V Group, before selling its real estate assets to company General Deo, and the real estate business eventually became Nexity. Bernard was educated at the Lycée Maxence van der Meersch in Roubaix, and the Lycée Féderbe in Lille. In 1971, he graduated from the École Polytechnique, France's leading engineering school, and began work for his father's company. Arnaud began his career in 1971, working for Ferret Savinel, a construction company owned by his father, and was its president from 1978 to 1984. In 1984 Bernard, then a young real estate developer, heard that the French government was set to choose someone to take over the Boussac saint Frères empire, a textile and retail conglomerate that owned Christian Dior. Arnaud had just returned from the United States, where his neighbor in Westchester County was John Kluge, who made billions of dollars by taking his company Metro Media private. With the help of Antoine Bernheim, a senior partner of Lazard Frères, Arnaud acquired the financier Agach, a luxury goods company. He became the CEO of Financière Agache and subsequently took control of Boussac saint Frères. Along with Christian Dior, Boussac's assets included the department store Le Bon Marché, the retail shop Conferama, and the diapers manufacturer Poduce. Bernard won the bidding war for Boussac saint Frères and bought the group for a ceremonial one franc. After Arnaud bought Boussac, he laid off 9,000 workers in two years, after which he acquired the nickname, The Terminator. He then sold nearly all of the company's assets, keeping only the Christian Dior brand and Le Bon Marché department store. As a result of the job's cuts and reforms, Arno was able to nurse financier Agache back to health. By 1987, the company was profitable again, and booked earnings of $112 million on a revenue stream of $1.9 billion. In July 1988, Bernard Arnault provided $1.5 billion to form a holding company with Guinness that held 24% of LVMH's shares. In response to rumors that the Louis Vuitton Group was buying LVMH's stock to form a blocking minority, Arnault spent $600 million to buy 13.5% more of LVMH, making him LVMH's largest shareholder. LVMH had been created on the premise that the conglomerate would be too large for a single hostile raider. However, the premise failed to take into account internal takeover attempts. The fault became too large to ignore when Arnaud had a differing strategic vision from Henry Rackemeyer, Louis Vuitton's president. In January 1989, he spent another $500 million to gain control of a total of 43.5% of LVMH's shares and 35% of its voting rights, thus reaching the blocking minority that he needed to stop the dismantlement of the LVMH group. He turned on Rackemeyer, stripped him of his power and ousted him from the board of directors. On 13 January 1989, Bernard was unanimously elected chairman of the executive management board. After assuming leadership, Arno led the company through an ambitious development plan, transforming it into one of the largest luxury groups in the world, alongside Swiss luxury giant Richemont and French-based Caring. In 11 years, annual sales and profit rose by a factor of five, and the market value of LVMH increased by a factor by 15. In July 1988, Bernard acquired Céline. That same year, he sponsored French fashion designer Christian Lacroix in order to advertise the company's luxury clothing line. In 1993, LVMH acquired Berluti and Kenzo. In the same year, Arnaud bought out the French economic newspaper Le Tribune. The company never achieved the desired success, despite his 150 million euro investment, 
and he sold it in November 2007 in order to buy a different French economic newspaper, Les Echos, for 240 million euros. In 1994, LVMH acquired the perfume firm Guerlain. In 1996, Arnaud bought out Lowe, followed by Marc Jacobs and Sephora in 1997. These brands were also integrated into the group. Thomas Pink in 1999, Emilio Pucci in 2000 and Fendi, DKNY and La Samaritaine in 2001. In the 1990s, Bernard Arnault decided to develop a center in New York to manage LVMH's presence in the United States. He chose Christian de Port Zampark to supervise this project. The result was the LVMH Tower that opened in December 1999. That same year, Arno turned his eyes on Gucci, an Italian leather goods company, which was run by Tom Ford and Domenico de Sol. He discreetly amassed a 5% stake in the company before being detected. Gucci responded hostily and called it a creeping takeover. Upon being noticed, Arno upped his stake to 34.4% while insisting he wanted to be a supportive and unassertive stakeholder. De Sol proposed that in return for board representation, Bernard would stop increasing his stake in Gucci. However, Arno refused to accept these terms. De Sol discovered a loophole that allowed him to issue shares with only board approval, and for every share LVMH bought, he created more for his employees, diluting Arno's stake. The fight dragged on until settlement in September 2001. After the legal ruling, LVMH sold its shares and walked away with $700 million in profit. On 7 March 2011, Arno announced the acquisition of 50.4% of family-owned shares of the Italian jeweler Bulgari with the intention to make a tender offer for the rest, which was publicly owned. The transaction was worth $5.2 billion. In 2011, Arno invested $640 million in establishing El Capital Asia. On 7 March 2013, National Business Daily reported that mid-priced clothing brand QDA would open stores with the assistance of Arno's private equity firm L Capital Asia and Chinese apparel company Shin He Co. Limited in Beijing. In 2011, LVMH invested $640 million in establishing L Capital Asia. In February 2014, Arno entered into a joint venture with the Italian fashion brand Marco De Vincenzo, taking a minority 45% stake in the firm. In April 2017, Arno announced the acquisition of Christian Dior Haute Couture, leather, both men's and women's ready-to-wear, and footwear lines, which integrated the entire Christian Dior brand within LVMH. By January 2018, Arno had led the company to record sales of 42.6 billion euros in 2017, up 13% over the previous year, as all divisions turned in strong performances. That same year, the net profit increased 29%. In November 2019, Arno planned to acquire Tiffany & Co. for approximately US$16.2 billion. The deal was expected to close by June 2020. LVMH then issued a statement in September 2020 indicating that the takeover would not proceed, and that the deal was invalid because of Tiffany's handling of the business during the COVID-19 pandemic. Subsequently, Tiffany filed suit against LVMH, asking the court to compel the purchase or to assess damages against the defendant. LVMH planned to counter sue, alleging that mismanagement had invalidated the purchase agreement. In mid-September 2020, a reliable source told Forbes that the reason for Arno's decision to cancel the Tiffany purchase was purely financial. Tiffany was paying millions in dividends to shareholders despite a financial loss of US$32 million during the pandemic. Upon examination of financial records, Arno discovered that some US$70 million had already been paid out by Tiffany with an additional US$70 million scheduled to be paid in November 2020. LVMH filed a counterclaim against the court action commenced by Tiffany. A statement issued by LMVH blamed Tiffany's mismanagement during the pandemic and claimed that it was burning cash and reporting losses. In late October 2020 Tiffany and LVMH agreed to the original takeover plan, though at a slightly reduced price of nearly US$16 billion, a minor reduction of 2.6% from the aforementioned deal. The new deal reduced the amount paid per share by LVMH from the original price of $135 to $131.50. LVMH completed the purchase of Tiffany in January 2021. Under Arno's leadership, LVMH has grown to become the largest company by market capitalization in the Eurozone, with a record of $382 billion as of May 2021. 
Arno has promoted decisions towards decentralizing the group's brands as a business strategy. As a result of these measures, brands under the LVMH umbrella such as Tiffany are still viewed independent firms with their own history. For a very brief period on May 24, 2021, Arno temporarily became the richest man in the world, surpassing Jeff Bezos with a net worth of $187.3 billion. A few hours later, however, Amazon stock ticked up and Jeff Bezos retook the spot. Bernard is widely known as an art connoisseur and collector. Arno's collection includes work by Picasso, Eve Klein, Henry Moore, and Andy Warhol. He was also instrumental in establishing LVMH as a major patron of art in France. The LVMH Young Fashion Designer was created as an international competition open to students from fine art schools. Every year, the winner is awarded a grant to support the creation of the designer's own label and with a year of mentorship. From 1999 to 2003, he owned Philips de Paris and Company, an art auction house, and bought out the first French auctioneer, Tajin. In 2006, Arnaud started the building project of the Louis Vuitton Foundation. Dedicated to creation and contemporary art, the building was designed by the architect Frank Gehry. The foundation's grand opening at the Jardin de Climatation Paris was held on 20 October 2014.